This is Lewis Hart for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store, Forged Irish, down on freebets.com. Delighted to be joined by Mike Lenardi. Um, we've just capped off uh, a good, a great night in Puerto Rico. It was meant to be a great night. Um, finished with major disappointment. Um, the main event, Amanda Serrano versus Nina Menke, um, cancelled, I suppose, right before the ring walks um, due to an eye injury to Serrano. Um, just sum up how you're feeling uh, after, after that, really. Oh, man, it's hugely disappointing um, first and foremost for Amanda I mean uh, you know gotten to know Amanda and she's just uh, a wonderful human being first and foremost and you know the amount of work she does nobody works harder than Amanda Serrano um, you, you know and I know it's just absolutely heartbreaking for her and, and, and our whole family and it's uh, I mean it's gutting really for for the whole team you know MVP included just to quickly touch on it, I know Nikisa slightly touched on it there, um, but what was the process from understanding that she had this eye problem to then, you know, cancelling the fight? Was you sort of, when she turned up to the venue, you were fully confident that, you know, we would see a fight uh, tonight? Well, we were cautiously optimistic. Um, she wanted to fight. I, I think she may have downplayed the severity a little bit because she wanted to fight, <laughs> you know. Um, she came and her eye was visibly damaged, uh, swollen a bit, and, and the, you know, the, the boxing commission caught on very quickly and had the doctor come over and, and, and give her, you know, it put her through a battery of tests and, and, and she failed. And, and they said there's just no way they could allow her to fight. Um, she wanted to fight, obviously. Um, it, it, you know, and it just it, unfortunately it wasn't meant to be tonight for whatever reason, like Jake said, only the universe knows. And just one thing I did want to ask when it comes to the opponent of Nina Menke, what was the communication like with her? Because she was saying there at the press that she found out, you know, when she was getting her hands wrapped. Um, what was the sort of communication with the opponent of Nina? Was she fully aware of this injury or was it a fight night thing, as she said? No, it was a fight night thing. It, like I say, uh, Amanda came to the venue with every intention of fighting. And, you know, it's, it's to put you kind of through the, the whirlwind of events would be arduous, but, you know, the commission alerts us and then they call the director of the commission and, and you know, it has to go through a chain of command. They had to check some of their rules and bylaws to see what the process is for this. Um, no one has, has, to my working knowledge, in an event of this magnitude, ever had the main event fall out the night of the show. And it's, uh, you know, we all were kind of going through it for the first time and trying to figure things out together. And kind of once we had clarity from, from the commission, uh, we spoke with Nina's father, who's also her manager, her, her, her promoter. We spoke with Nina personally. Um, you, you know, she was getting ready to fight. It, this was kind of, um, I don't know if we can say, this is kind of like uh, around the, at the end of, of, of Bamba's fight when we got like kind of full clarity on this. And when it comes to a next date, I know it's the Philly fo full focus is on Amanda Serrano who's healing from her, from her injury, but confident that, that Nina Menke will be the, the opponent that is next for her? I mean, look, she's a, the mandatory challenger, and, and obviously she was a deserving opponent before this. Um, I, I, and I just told Nina this, she's an even more deserving opponent now. There's kind of a, a very unique storyline there. Um, look, it's, it's definitely a fight uh, I, I think makes sense in the future. It, it's, it's really hard to make promises or, or you know, guarantees at this stage. Um, Amanda has to go see an eye specialist um, as soon as possible. And, you know, the, the commission doctor doesn't think it's anything too severe, um, you, you know, but it's, it was obstructing her vision and, and you know, we got to get checked out and get Amanda healthy first and foremost. You know, she can't, she can't, we can't even think of another fight without her being 100% healthy. Absolutely. And just moving on, a quick word on Jake Paul, um, another emphatic first round knockout against Ryan Borland. Um, happy with what you saw out there? I am. I mean, I mean, look, uh, Ryan was clearly the most experienced guy he ever fought. I mean, on, on paper, I, I think Ryan equated himself quite well. I mean, it, he didn't look. I mean, anybody that saw any of the fight week festivities, you, you know, Ryan expected to win tonight. I don't. He wasn't overwhelmed by the moment. He was. He was very much. He thought this was his night. And uh, I spoke with Ryan 
after the fight and, and asked, you know, thanked him for his efforts and in, in both promoting the fight. He's very, very professional. He's a, he's a great guy. And uh, I asked him what he thought of Jake, and he said he hits very hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was going to say that, like, the public opinion would probably be someone that was, was disappointed in that opponent. You know, um, it, it's, it's two professional boxers, so-called, that Jake's fought now, um, two first-round knockouts, and guys who, um, you know, m sort of when, when you look at it on the naked eye, I think people are right to sort of be disappointed with them opponents, do you think? No, I, I don't think so at all. I, I mean, unless you're looking at the kind of, you know, Shakurs of the world that were Olympic medalists and stuff like that, like, you know, Jake's 10 fights in and fighting a guy 17 and two. Um, I, I, I don't think so. The, the, the optics are different for Jake. Everything is different for Jake. Everything's under a microscope. You know, if you can look at any of the top pound-for-pound pound fighters, you know, aside from Lomachenko, like, guys are not fighting 17 and 2 fighters in their 10th pro fight. That's just, it kind of just doesn't happen. It's just all this extra attention is on Jake because of who he is, you know. And, 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 and granted, they're not fighting main events and co-main events and, and massive, massive events. Um, you know, so that's part of, you know, the calculus too. But Jake is going to be a world champion that's his that's his goal and you know at knowing jake jake accomplishes everything he sets out to do um and and part of that process is getting him more real boxing experience fighting people that are more experienced than him because that's how that's how you build a prospect and and, and you know jake record and experience wise is still very much a prospect you know I was going to say that with that being said and what you're saying there, do you see Ryan, guys like Ryan Ball and Andre August uh, let steps, uh, step above in competition when you compare them to guys like, you know, maybe you know, Tyron Woodley a few years ago, but someone like Anderson Silva and Nate Diaz, do you see them as step ups above in competition or is it uh, Jake's just getting better so he's making, these, making the, you know, the professional boxers look bad as those? I think it's mostly Jake getting better. I, I will say this, the, the guys like Nate Diaz, Anderson Silva, Woodley, they're not overwhelmed by, by massive events. Um, a lot of fighters that have never been on that stage, those guys have been, even though it wasn't in a proper boxing match. They've, they, Anderson Silva is like, you know, cool as a cucumber. And, and, and he, people forget too, he had just beaten Chavez Jr. Yeah. before that, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Um, That's what I meant, like, do you see, it was Anderson, it, is Anderson Silva like? Are they, do you see them as step up? Like the, the opponent that Jake fought tonight was that a step up from someone like Anderson Silva? I do. I, I think Jake is just that much better. People forget, or, or maybe they're not cognizant that Jake is so new to boxing that every training camp he does, he's making big improvements. So it's like every time he fights, he's like a new fighter. And, and and part of my job is is finding the guys that help get him that experience and and in, you know get him enough resistance. Um, like I said, Ryan came to win. Ryan Borland came to win, and and I think he, he, you know I it's hard to say he equated himself well because he got stopped in the first round, but he got hit with massive shots. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it, he he came out. He let his hands go. He was trying to win. You know he like I say this was he thought this was his moment, his night. You know. Just a final one from me. Um, word on Javon Walton um, after that performance, or, or I suppose the crowd, uh, would there be any rushes to get him back to uh, Puerto Rico with uh, the crowd being so negative on him? Yeah, look, it, it, you know, it's, it, it's difficult fighting on the undercard of a massive event. You know, especially when everyone's here to see Amanda and Jake. If you're not giving them great entertainment, they're, they're gonna be kind of like, okay, let's, let's get on with it. And, and especially neither fighter being Puerto Rican in that, in that particular fight. Uh, I, I want to say every other fight we had on the card had a Puerto Rican in it. Um, so I think that was part of it. It, it wasn't an overly entertaining fight. Um, look, Juana is extremely talented, extremely talented. This is a very difficult environment to, to try to make a, a global debut. Um, he's also a 17 year old kid. <laughs> You speak with him and you forget that because he's so poised and, 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 and so, uh, you know, he's so mature, but he's a 17-year-old kid. We have to give him a little bit of grace. I thought he won the fight. 
Um, I thought the fight was competitive, but I thought he won it. I, I, I struggled to see, you know, giving Josh Torres two rounds, to be honest. Absolutely. Mike, thank you for taking time to speak to me. Really appreciate it. catch up with you. And I've had a great week in Puerto Rico. MVP have treated me very, very well. Um, as a man from the UK, I do appreciate all the hospitality that um, yourself and uh, all the rest of your staff have given me. So I appreciate it, mate. Absolutely. Top man. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Thank you, mate.